Exam Scholar, Real Estate Edition. Question 1. What special type of ownership is available in most non-community property states and is only available to married persons? A. Estate by escheat. B. Tenancy by the entirety. C. Dual tenancy. D. Coop estate. Answer. B. Tenancy by the entirety is available in most non-community property states and is automatically the assumed form of ownership when a couple purchases real estate together unless they opt for another form. Question 2. If a restaurant is located in a section of town that has been rezoned from restaurant and retail to commercial office building development, the restaurant can remain there by use of A. A special use permit B. Non-conforming use C. The grandfather use clause D. Tenancy and specuity Answer B. The restaurant can remain in place by non-conforming use. The restaurant will not be able to expand into other neighboring sites, however. Question 3. A broker gives a written step-by-step -step instruction manual to new agents and instructs them to follow each of the steps exactly in order to produce sales for the brokerage. In addition, the broker threatens to discipline any agent that does not follow the steps, up to and including termination. The agent should A. Be scared of losing the position in the brokerage by means of firing. B. Follow the directions step by step. C. Do what they feel is best for obtaining results for the brokerage. An agent is an independent contractor and liable for results only, not the means they are achieved. D. None of these. Answer. C. A real estate agent working under a broker is liable to the company only for the results achieved as defined in the hiring contract and not by the specific means they are achieved. This is an independent contractor arrangement. If it were an employer-employee relationship, the employer can dictate the specific means of obtaining performance. Question 4. To match the specifications of a subject property, in the market data approach to appraisal, the sales prices of comparable properties are A increased b decreased c adjusted d net zeroed answer c in the sales or market data approach to appraisal the sales prices of comparable properties are adjusted to match the specifications of a subject property question 5 in real estate the simplest form of property ownership is called A. Joint B. Tenancy in common C. Community D. Severalty Answer D. The simplest form of ownership in regard to real estate is severalty because there is only one owner. All other forms include multiple party owners involved. Question 6. What is the formula for determining the value of an investment property? A. At operating income divided by capitalization rate. B. Capitalization rate multiplied by net operating income. C. Potential gross income divided by operating income. D. Potential gross income divided by capitalization rate. Answer. A. Net operating income is divided by the capitalization rate to arrive at the value of the property. Question 7. If a buyer decides to pay for a property in cash, which form is required to be filed according to the IRS? A. Form 1090. B. Form 9600. C. Form 8300. D. Form 2740B. Answer. C. IRS Form 8300 must be filed on all cash payments that are $10,000 or more. Question 8. 
a cash payment of $10,001 is given as earnest money to secure a property. What must be filed? A. A documenting receipt. B. A procurement contract. C. An IRS Form 8300. D. An expediting loan form. Answer. C. The IRS requires any cash payments over $10,000 be recorded by filing a Form 8300. Question 9. A vendor vendee is a term that best describes the relationship between A. Purchase and sales B. Mortgage or mortgagee C. Grantor grantee D. Option or optionee Answer A. The term vendor vendee is best matched with purchase and sales. Question 10. Which term is best related to lender borrower? A. Grantor grantee B. Mortgage or mortgagee C. Option or optionee D. Seller buyer Answer B. The best match from this list that is related to lender borrower is mortgage or mortgagee. This relationship is a lender borrower relationship. Question 1. Commissions of a licensed real estate broker specializing in property management are A. Based on the first year's rent B. Based on a percentage of the gross rents collected C. Based on a percentage of the rents expected to be collected over the life of the leases D. Equal to the first and last month's rent Answer B. Commissions are usually based on a percentage of the gross rents collected not those expected over the life of the leases. Question 2. An interest in real property can be acquired through adverse possession or by prescription. The interest acquired by prescription is a. The right to use the land of another b. An equitable title c. A legal title d. A private grant Answer a. A. Prescription refers to an easement, which is the right to use the property of another. Question 3. In imposing restrictions on a new large subdivision, the most practical method is to A. Record the restrictions in the manner provided by law and make reference to them in each deed. B. Publish the restrictions in a newspaper of general circulation. C. Post the restrictions on the property. D. Post the restrictions as covenants in all the deeds. Answer. A. It is impractical to place the restrictions in each deed since there are usually a great number of restrictions. It is better to record the restrictions and make reference to them in each deed. Question 4. A broker receives an offer on a property and a prospective purchaser gives him a $1,000 deposit. He places the deposit in his trust account. After all the conditions of the deposit receipt have been fulfilled, the buyer decides that he wants to back out. A. Give the $1,000 to the seller. B. Give the $1,000 to the buyer. C. Keep the $1,000 in his trust account. D. None of the above. Answer. The deposit belongs to the seller once the conditions of the deposit receipt have been fulfilled. Question 5. When a developer sets up a subdivision, he places certain restrictions on each of the lots. Of these, experience has shown which of the following is least likely to be enforced. A. Limitations on size of each lot. B. Limitations on the dollars allowed for improvements on each lot. C. Limitations on square footage of each home. D. Limitations on the number of stories or total height of structures. Answer. B. Limitations for the amount of dollars allowed for the improvements on each lot is the most difficult type of restriction to enforce, because the value of the dollar changes and thus, the quality of the improvements would change. Question 6. The Hutchinsons, prospective buyers of a home, 
request a broker to find a loan for them. He would mostly likely contact a an institution lender, such as bank or savings and loan association, b a Federal Reserve Bank, c the Federal Housing Administration, d an FHA appraiser, answer an institutional lender is more likely to be advancing the funds towards the purchase of a home. The Federal Housing Administration and the Federal Reserve Bank are not lenders in the home loan market. Question 7. Mortgages and trust deeds differ in all of the following ways, except a. Parties b. Securities c. Statute of Limitations D. Title. Answer. B. A mortgage and a trust deed are security interests in property, they provide the legal tight to have the property sold in the event that the borrower defaults. Question 8. After six lots have been sold in subdivision, the real estate commissioner was informed of misrepresentation in the sales program. The commissioner could halt the sale of more lots by A. Voiding the public report. B. Attaching the unsold lots. C. Issuing a desist and refrain order. D. Filing an accusation in court. Answer. C. The best course of action available to the commissioner would be a desist and refrain order. Such an action would immediately halt all future sales for marketing of the property. Question 9. A subordination clause in a trust deed benefits. A. The beneficiary. B. The truster. C. The trustee. D. None of the above. Answer. B. A subordination clause allows the truster to obtain a later trust deed which will move into prior position as regards to payment, in case of default. It is to the truster's advantage not to the beneficiaries. Question 10. An agency relationship can be established by all of the following, except a. Agent volunteering b. Oral agreement c. Implied statement of law d. Agreement of principle Answer. A. An agent cannot volunteer to be your agent. An agency can be established by an agreement with the principal. It can be implied, by your acts, the principal accepts your agency. It can be an oral agreement. Agency does not have to be in writing but the commission agreement must be in writing. Question 1. A real estate broker only has a right to earn a commission when the property sells during the listing period except when which of the following is included in the listing agreement. A. A broker's protection clause. B. Exculpatory clause. C. A subordination clause. D. None of the above. Answer. A. The broker is entitled to a commission if the property is sold to parties with whom he has negotiated during the term of the listing for a stated number of days after the listing expires. Question 2. Harris and Davis, single people, owned a parcel of real property as joint tenants. Harris encumbered his interest for $10,000 borrowing the amount to pay medical bills without the knowledge or consent of Davis. Shortly thereafter, Harris died, with the debt still unpaid. Which of the following would be true? A. Davis and the lender would be tenants in common, each owning one half interest in the property. B. Davis would own all of the property free and clear of the encumbrance. C. Davis would own all of the property but would be subject to the $10,000 loan. D. Davis and the beneficiary would own the property as joint tenants, each with a one half interest. Answer. B. On the death of one joint tenant, the survivors take title to the property without the obligation to pay on foreclosed liens. Question 3. 
occasionally, the title to real property becomes unmarketable. Which of the following causes would be least likely to result in that eventuality? A. Imperfect title, due to a breach caused by adverse possession of a prior owner. B. A lease pendants filed by the husband of the owner of record. C. Restrictions imposed by a private owner through a deed notation. D. Public restrictions contained in zoning ordinances and building codes. Answer. D. Public restrictions rarely cause title to real property to be unmarketable, private restrictions sometimes do. Question 4. Prices have risen 20%. What has happened to the value of the dollar? A. It has gone down 16 and two-thirds percent. B. It has gone down 20%. C. It has gone down 25%. B. None of the above. Answer. A. For instance, an item that used to sell for $1 now sells for $1.20. The dollar now buys five-sixths of what it used to buy. Its value has gone down one-sixth or sixteen and two-thirds. Question 5. What supports the floor and ceiling loads? A. Joists. B. Studs. C. Supporters. D. Mudsills. Answer. A. Joists are the beams that run horizontal and parallel to each other and are used to support the floor and ceiling loads. Joists are beams not rafters. Question 6. A broker who takes a listing with option to purchase is, first of all, A. A principal. B. An optioner. C. An optioning. D. An agent. Answer. D. A listing agreement which contains an option to purchase is first of all a contract employing the broker to act as an agent for the owner in the sale of the property and that is his principal role. If he exercises the option he operates in the capacity of a principal in its resale, but this is secondary to this responsibility as an agent. Question 7. An inner city neighborhood is well integrated with civic groups working to maintain social harmony. However, mounting problems with schools and with increasing crime have caused several white families to move out. In which of the following statements is Broker Brown in violation of the law? 1. He is actively soliciting listings in the area with the slogan Sell Now, Save Equity. 2. He is offering lower commission rates to whites who patronize his business. A. One only. B. Two only. C. Both statements. D. Neither statements. Answer. C. Both of these acts are in violation of the fair housing laws. Question 8. The liquidation of a financial obligation on an installment plan or basis is A. Conversion B. Amortization C. Acceleration D. Conveyancing Answer B. Amortization means to pay principal and interest over the life of the loan. Question 9. Mr. and Mrs. Davis held real property as husband and wife. Mr. Davis died and his will specified that all his interests were to go to his eldest son, Thomas. Son Thomas would. A. Inherit an undivided one-half interest in the property. B. Acquire a one-half interest in the property. C. Acquire title to the property in fee simple, as he is the eldest male heir. D. Acquire no interest in the property as it would automatically go to the widow. Answer. A. Under the community property law, either spouse may will his or her undivided one half to anyone they choose. Question 10. Inasmuch as real property requires more time to market than listed securities, require more care, and comes in larger denominations, its return should be. A. 
about the same as from bonds. b. Higher than from bonds and less than from first trust deeds. c. Equal to the return from first mortgages. d. Higher than that of bonds or first mortgages. Answer. d. The return from real property should be higher than from bonds or first trust deeds because of the above factors. Question 1. A buyer of a residence, prior to the close of escrow, asks the broker for permission to move into the property. The broker should a. Deny the buyer permission b. Grant the buyer oral permission c. Ask the buyer to sign a lease for the property d. Obtain written consent from the owner? Answer. D. Prior to the close of escrow, the seller is still the owner, therefore, the broker should get written consent from the owner before allowing a buyer to take possession. Question 2. An alienation clause provides that. A. The principal amount of the loan, plus accrued interest, is due in the event of the sale of the property. B. The mortgage is security for a promissory note. C. A lien can be placed on the property that takes precedence over a prior recorded trust deed. D. None of the above. Answer. A. Also called due on sale. It states that the lender may demand the loan plus accrued interest be paid in full in the event the property is sold. Question 3. If a man has a freehold estate, which of the following would result in his having a less than freehold estate? A. Sale and lease back. B. Selling the mineral rights to a third party. C. Giving a leasehold interest for five years. D. Granting a life estate. Answer. A. A less than freehold estate is a landlord slash tenant arrangement. Of the choices offered, only a sale leaseback would result in a less than freehold estate. Question 4. Broker Young, as an agent, showed a property to James. James signed a deposit receipt which contained the following words, buyer to accept the property in an as-is condition. Broker Young knew that the plumbing in the property was in a major state of disrepair with parts missing, but he did not tell James. The problem with the plumbing would not be apparent to an ordinary, prudent person. If James sued the seller for damages for fraud, the court suit would probably be a. Unsuccessful because the as-is provision in the deposit receipt shows that there is a mutual understanding of possible defects b. Unsuccessful because the deposit receipt specifically state buyer to accept the property in an as-is condition c. Successful because the duty to disclose a material fact cannot be avoided by an as is provision under the stated circumstances. D. Successful because as is refers only to obvious defects. Answer. C. The real estate commissioner and the courts are very protective of consumers. Therefore, they will not allow an as is clause to be valid except for obvious defects, which any reasonable and prudent person could discover. Question 5. To alienate title to real property, one would a. Encumber it. b. Place a homestead on the property. c. Convey the title. d. Cloud the title. Answer. c. The term alienate means to transfer or convey. To alienate title means to convey it. Question 6. Real property would include a. Real property tax lien b. Trust deed c. Crude oil which has just reached the surface in a pipe drilled beneath the land d. None of the above are real property answer d. None of the possible answers to this question is real property. A tax lien and a trust deed, although having to do with real property, are not real property. Oil which has been captured as personal property. Question 7. Which is true concerning an option? A. 
Title acquired by exercising an option usually dates back to the time of the option and cuts off intervening rights acquiring with knowledge of the existence of the option. B. Only the optioner is bound to a sale. C. The optionee has no interest or estate in the land. D. All of the above statements are true. Answer. D. All of these statements are true. Question 8. Abel buys Blackacre from Baker, taking title to the property subject to the existing loan. The person primarily responsible for the repayment of the loan would be A. Abel B. Baker C. Either Abel or Baker D. Neither Abel or Baker Answer B. When a buyer takes title subject to the loan, the seller retains the responsibility for the repayment of the note. The buyer takes no responsibility for the note. The buyer can lose a property by foreclosure because a property was bought encumbered with loan, but after the foreclosure, if there is a deficiency in the process, the buyer is not liable for that note deficiency. Any suit would be against the seller for the deficiency judgment as the buyer's name does not appear on the note. Question 9. A lessee's interest is a. Personal property. B. A chattel reel. C. A grantee's property for a period of time which reverts to the grantor at the expiration of the term. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All three choices refer to the lessee's interest in real property. Always keep in mind that a lessee's interest is personal property known as chattel reel. Question 10. An apartment owner was figuring his net income for income tax purposes. He took the gross income and deducted certain expenses. Of the ones listed below, which could he not deduct? A. Depreciation. B. Interest on loan for purpose of purchasing the property. C. Management expenses. D. Cost of offense. Answer. D. Offense would be a capital improvement. The cost of it should be added to the cost basis of the property and depreciated. Question 1. Which of the following factors primarily affects supply in the real estate market? A. Population. B. Demographics. C. Employment. D. Government financial policies. Answer. D. Population, demographics and employment impact demand for a commodity, but government fiscal, spending and taxing, policies strongly influence availability and cost of credit for those who produce things to be sold, like new homes. Question 2. Of the following, the method which allows the most depreciation to be taken during the first year would be A. Straight line method B. 150% declining balance method C. 200% declining balance method D. Sum of the year's digits method Answer C. The 200% declining balance method of depreciation allows the most depreciation for the first year. The sum of the year's digits method allows the most depreciation in the earlier years. Question 3. Daniels purchased 60 acres of land near a city. He intended to subdivide it for sale as single-family residential lots and sell the lots for cash. Daniels needs maximum financing to put in streets, curbs, gutters, sidewalks, etc. He wants to pass the cost of these to the lot purchasers in such a way that when title policies are issued to future lot owners, the policies will contain no reference to assessment liens for the above stated purposes. Daniel's best course for financing these needs will probably be a. Real property sales contracts b. Improvement bonds c. Interim loans from institutional lenders d. Corporate stock. 
Answer. C. Answer B would result in assessment liens. Answers A and D are not specifically financing means for such improvements. By elimination, answer C is the best choice. Question 4. A new well and pump were installed on a parcel of land. For property tax assessment purposes, the county assessor would consider these as A. Improvements B. Additions C. Part of the land D. Personal property Answer A. A well and pump would be improvements to the real property. Question 5. Which of the following factors is most likely to influence demand for real estate? A. The number of real estate brokers in the area. B. The number of full-time real estate salespersons in the area. C. The wage levels and employment opportunities. D. The price of new homes being built in the area. Answer. C. When wage levels and job expansion are increasing, workers are more likely to buy real estate. When wages are stagnant or declining, they hold back from making big purchasing commitments. Effective demand requires not only the desire to purchase a product, but also the financial means to do so. Question 6. The one unity in a joint tenancy holding that is also present in tenancy and common holding is A. Equal right of possession B. Right of survivorship C. Equal interest of all owners D. Tenant in possession can be charged rent for the use of the land? Answer. A. Under any type of ownership, each owner has an equal right of possession. This means that any owner can go anywhere on the property regardless of the percentage of their overall interest. Question 7. As a part of the purchase price, the seller of a parcel of land accepted a purchase money first trust deed which contained a subordinate clause. This clause would a. Guarantee priority of the first trust deed. B. Preclude the buyer from placing construction loans on the property. C. B. Permit the buyer to place a future loan on the property that would have priority. D. Permit additional liens to be placed against the property without the buyer's consent. Answer. C. A loan in a trust deed that contains a subordination clause supersedes the rule the first to record is the first in right, a subordination clause in a note and trust deed is evidence that the lender agrees that a future obtained trust deed may be prior to this loan even though the future loan is recorded later. Oftentimes builders use this clause in a trust deed and note used to purchase raw land from the owner. They offer the owner the full price contingent upon him carrying back financing for the land. The trust deed that he is to receive from the builder must contain a subordination clause in which the owner of the land agrees to be junior in priority to a future recorded construction loan. Question 8. Capitalization is an appraisal process used to a. Convert net income into market value b. Establish book value c. Determine net income D. Establish a capitalization rate. Answer. A. Capitalization of income is a method of establishing the value of income type properties. Question 9. The type of legal action that would most likely be taken in the event of a default on a land contract would be A. Lease pendens B. Writ of execution C. Foreclosure by trustee's sale. D. Quiet title action. Answer D. If the original land contract had been recorded and the buyer has defaulted, there would be a cloud on the title and some form of legal action would be required to clear the title. This would not be a foreclosure but a quiet title action. Question 10. A subordination clause in a trust deed may. A. Give priority to liens subsequently recorded against the property. B. Allow for periodic renegotiation and adjustment in the terms of the obligation. C. 
prohibit the truster from making an additional loan against the property before the trust deed is paid off. D. Permit the obligation to be paid off ahead of schedule. Answer. A. A subordination clause written into a loan gives a lower, secondary, position to that loan if another loan is recorded later. Exam Scholar, Real Estate Edition.